What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we are finally back with the news. So, we're going to jump in and talk about a few things in Destiny 2. We've got some updates and content to round up in the next couple of weeks, and so Bungie give us information about Corridors of Time, which is in fact a limited time event. I'm not sure how that one works, but we can at least explain what it means, and then we're going to talk exotic glitches, changes coming later on this month, as well as a few new bits of information about Empyrean and Foundation, upcoming quests, then we'll touch on community feedback and wider news related to Destiny 2. So guys, as always, if you enjoy the video, then feel free to give us a like rating down below as it really does help us out on the channel, but otherwise, let's get into it. So the first thing we should talk about is the Corridors of Time. And we do have a little bit of an update about that. So DMG said you have seven days before the Corridors of Time close. Cheers again to everyone who kicked ass on the puzzle. This last week will be one that I'll never forget. So of course, what that does give us right there is confirmation that Corridors of Time is actually a limited time event. And so initially, if you do want to get the emblem or any of the lore, in fact, the entire lore book, Four Corridors of Time looks like it will go away, as well as the additional rewards for that. So that's the first thing to bear in mind, get those done before next week's reset. But also, of course, it does appear to eliminate any additional possibility of extra hidden stuff in exploring the Corridors of Time, right? There has been a lot of conversation about the reward, and it's safe to say players got pretty hyped for the potential of an exotic sword or another secret exotic that we hadn't seen on the roadmap, right? And so be sure to let us know your thoughts about that. I'm not entirely sure why Corridors of Time needs to be a limited time thing, but... On the subject of the Bastion quest, for anyone who currently isn't able to pick it up, because quite a few of you guys said that in the reset video yesterday, Bungie Help did tweet, and they said, to begin the quest for Bastion, players first need to fully complete the Saint-14 storyline, and this includes the Recovering the Past and an Impossible Task quests. And so basically those are prerequisites that you have to get through in the Season of Dawn content before you can get that exotic quest. Another question that a lot of folks were asking this week was about the Iron Banner bow, and some folks thought that it was coming later this season. But unfortunately, jumping back to this week at Bungie earlier this season, they did confirm that we will need to wait until season 10. And so at least I suppose it's something new for next season, but Bungie even prepped up an ornament for this weapon, which comes with a sort of classic D1 Iron Banner vibe. So presumably that's all going to pop up in season 10, but the actual weapon can get perks like Vorpal Weapon for more damage against bosses and guardians and supers. So that could be pretty good for PvP as well as PvE, and then it can get no distractions, Archer's Tempo, and Eye of the Storm as well. And so once again, hopefully, we'll be getting that in Season 10. And of course, if you have been paying attention, you'll know that Season of Dawn is going to end on March 3rd this year, and so we're something like five and a half weeks away. But between now and then, of course, we do have some content lined up. But before we touch on that, on the subject of Iron Banner, Bungie identified a new bug, so there is an issue where the Ephrodite's Gift Triumph is an unlocking for players who collect 50 Iron Banner packages from Saladin. So if that's one you're trying to get done, hopefully they'll have a fix for that in one of the future updates before the end of the season. Now though, let's touch on a little bit of stuff that we know about the Empyrean Foundation. We have spoken about this in the past, but we do have a couple of new bits. And also, of course, this is the major content beat that really remains for this season. So this is coming up in early February, and we've learned that we'll be restoring the Foundation, actually helping to rebuild something. And one of the big tasks will be to donate 5,000 polarized fractaline, which in turn appears to unlock some of the Foundation's capabilities, such as an exotic item that lets you bump up the resonance rank of any obelisk in Season 9. However, we do have a couple of additional things to take a look at. So, firstly, it does seem possible that we'll have to clear a few quest steps for Foundation, things like constructing Empyrean slates, but also, there is a quest to insert a light fuse core into the tower obelisk, which by the way is the main reason that I always say to make sure that one is fully upgraded, kind of as a measure of preparation I guess, but we don't know for sure that this quest will be needed for foundation. However, on the same day, we will need to kill Inatam, the final Sundial boss. So when we kill Inatam, they're actually going to drop the Sundial core. We pick that item up, and then we have to brighten it by infusing orbs of light. So basically, collect orbs of light, and it looks like we're going to need 30 of them. And then once the core is charged, it goes into the tower obelisk for that final upgrade. And it looks like we're essentially going to unlock everything that the planetary obelisks hold, which will turn the tower one into a true central hub for all obelisk content. But of course, there could be additional rewards, and it could act as a prerequisite for the Empyrean Foundation. If you look at one of the interaction texts for the tower, it does say the obelisk comes as energy passes through it but finishes by saying that there is more to do before this beacon can shine. This is pretty interesting because in addition, when we look at the final triumph for the badge, 
Torchbearer, it also references the lighting of a beacon, so there is some natural story progression between the obelisks and the Foundation event. And I believe the Torchbearer Triumph is the one that requires 5,000 Fractaline, so bear that in mind, and when we complete it, we'll get more Fractaline and a bunch of Lighthouse Sun Shaders as a reward. There's also an emblem that's now visible called Restorative Light, and that one's obtained by contributing to the Empyrean Restoration effort, so obviously it's going to be part of the event, but otherwise we are left with a bit of a mystery when it comes to the rewards and exactly what we're going to be doing. However, this event does share quite a few similarities with something like Tribute Hall. We also discussed the fact that the Foundation currently lists a load of objectives which are linked to Season of Dawn, despite the fact that the event is supposed to be available for all players. So that is pretty bizarre. And while we should definitely temper our expectations here, I do still think that there is some scope for a secret quest, maybe one available for all players like we saw in year two, but of course that is pure speculation. And so be sure to give us any thoughts or information that you know about the Empyrean Foundation and what that could really be. But our other annual beat before the start of Season 10 would of course be Crimson Days. And we don't know a lot about the event for this year, outside of the fact that we're going to get a few different cosmetics of course. And so we've got the IVC-10 Sparrow, which interestingly doesn't list a source, so it is possible that it could be a quest reward for the event. And of course this is the Sparrow, as it says when two become one. You put them together and it makes the full Crimson Days icon right there. But otherwise we do have the very elaborate Crimson Shell, which does actually have a source listed as Eververse. And so hopefully that stuff will tide us over until the start of next season. But now let's jump in and talk about a few updates and things worth knowing in the game. So I mentioned this at the end of a video the other day, but you may have missed it. Of course, Bungie hotfixed Wishender last week and that removed the glitch where it does additional damage. However, another glitch was discovered where essentially when you fire projectiles from the weapon through certain items, so through some of the textures for plants in the game, for example, It'll actually duplicate the projectiles and essentially allow the weapon to do 12 times its intended damage. And so Wish Ender is still kind of broken in certain instances, and it's also possible to use certain holographic emotes and actually shoot through them to get the same effect. And so some players, obviously very, very situationally, are able to use it in things like the Crucible, so if you experience any funkiness with that, you know what's probably going on. In other updates though, Bungie on Twitter previewed the Galloping Knight multiplayer emote which is now available from Eververse. It's currently up for silver and players asked will it be in the rotation for Bright Dust and Destiny 2 on Twitter confirmed that yes it will. So since some players were a little bit aggravated that they'd already bought it for silver before Bungie confirmed that, I figured I'd let you guys know in case it was something that you were thinking about picking up because apparently it will show up for Bright Dust at some point. There have been so many questions about the Green with Envy quest and Cosmo confirmed that it is planned to be fixed in the next game update. And that next update will be update 2.71. And firstly, Bungie suggested that they're going to be improving drops for rare black armory bounties in an update later in January. And then in TWAB last week, Bungie didn't give us a date for 2.71, but they did say that it was currently on track. So it looks like if everything is going according to plan, the next update is probably going to be next week. But of course, that is subject to change. And we do have the launch of Empyrean Foundation and everything like that the week after. So at the very latest, we're probably going to get an update by the 4th of February. Either way, this is also when we'll get the breakneck buff. So finally, hopefully at least, the weapon is going to feel a lot better because it definitely needs some love. And then of course Hardlight is getting the adjustment to screen shake. And additionally Bungie have outlined adjustments to armor, adjusting diminishing returns on class item mods for example, and fixing the problem where Grenade Launcher Scavenger can award special ammo for grenade launchers when the player picks up primary. There are further quality of life updates to the roster and director and stuff like that, so we'll have to look for those patch notes next week. But something else interesting to point out here, Major Nelson from Xbox did tweet and said that they've added a bunch of new titles to the Project X Cloud preview in the US, UK and Korea. So as well as Civilization 2 and Halo Master Chief, Destiny 2 is actually part of that preview right now. And so if that's something you have access to, you can try D2 streaming on X Cloud, which basically does the same things that Stadia does but it's looking like it's going to have a much better roster of games at launch. So that's pretty interesting. And let us know if you've been playing Destiny on mobile or anything crazy like that. There's also a lot of conversation about backwards compatibility for PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. And apparently that is going to be a feature for a bunch of the games that are currently on the platform. So it seems pretty likely that Destiny will continue to actually be playable on those platforms. But of course, the next major question is whether we'll get any kind of technical upgrades for the game. 60 FPS or any stuff like that, obviously, is a pretty big deal for the game moving forward. And so we will have to see how that pans out. But definitely it looks like pretty exciting stuff in terms of streaming, but also 
for console players in the next couple of years. Now though, let's finish the video with some feedback about the Bastion quest, the puzzle, and the roadmap. So, on the basis of a lot of the feedback, DMG said, when creating the roadmap, we have the goal of setting expectations of value proposition, or what's the amount of content coming with the season pass. This gives the players the ability to justify the purchase compared to previous seasons. The lack of having the exotic listed could lead to a discussion of lack of value, and the lack of a roadmap could lead to the discussion of us hiding the season and not providing ample information for an informed purchase. So with those thoughts in mind, would you rather see a lack of expectations going into a season or more expectations set? It's an interesting tightrope to walk, a challenging one even, but we're always looking to improve Destiny as it continues to grow. And of course they are pretty interesting questions, right? I think while the roadmap has some negatives, like that kind of predictability in the game, obviously for the game to actually fit into anybody's life, there does need to be a certain level of predictability, and as a product, players want to know what they're actually buying, right? And so broadly speaking, I think a lot of us kind of agree and understand that concept that Bungie have, but obviously in the instance of Bastion, I think a lot of it boils down to the fact that it popped up kind of like a secret does, and whenever we've seen this in the past, of course, it's generally led to something completely new and unexpected. Well, I say completely new. Of course, we had Whisper of the Worm and Outbreak Prime. But you get what I'm saying. Those items weren't on roadmaps. And I guess there has been this expectation built by the player base that when something pops up which is completely unexpected, happens at a different time or in a different way to what we expected to, then yeah, generally they have turned out to be exotics or rewards that we weren't really anticipating. And so I can understand why players definitely started to build some expectation of another potential reward, and we've got the fact that the mission itself and the dialogue shown at the end of the mission did indeed kind of tease to the possibility of an exotic sword, right, based on what was shown on the grave. So Bungie definitely tried something different, and one of the community managers actually confirmed generally that the goal was in fact to take the puzzle, launch it into the game in mid-January, and then launch the Bastion quest at the end of the month anyway. And if players managed to solve the puzzle, then Bastion would essentially drop earlier than expected into the game, right? And so by concept, I actually think it's quite a cool idea but of course it comes with the problem that when we get something that takes so much effort like this and also pops up unexpected, yeah, generally we've learned that that leads to something also unexpected. And so be sure to give us your thoughts about it down below, guys. But for today, that is everything I wanted to talk about in the video. So if you've enjoyed this one, a rating down below is really super appreciated. Give us your thoughts on anything we've covered in the video, Empery and Foundation, the corridors of time going away, future seasonal content and the updates that we've spoken about. But if you're new to the channel and you do enjoy the content, be sure to hit that subscribe button so I can keep you up to date with everything related to Destiny 2. Otherwise though, thanks for tuning in guys, and whatever you get up to, I hope you have an awesome day.